Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a smart retention curve graph in Tableau. So first of all, what exactly is a retention curve? Well, I've put up a screenshot over here from Sequoia's website, uh, which is a really good representation of a retention curve. As you can see here, they've actually shown that the curve is either flat, smiling, um, or declining. And essentially, a retention curve is a single line, as you can see here, um, that represents the average retention rate over time for a specific action, right? So in order to create a retention curve, you first need to essentially build a retention cohort table, such as what I've got here. So this video is not gonna explain exactly how to do this, but to provide some context, let's just say we've got a, an app uh, and our users uh, get value from our app by doing a specific action. Then what we can do is we can build out this cohort where each row represents a group of users and zero is going to be always 100% in this case, which represents 100% of the users that did the action for the first time in that given week. Then what we can do is we can look at ongoing activity and by using a date diff uh, function in Tableau, we can uh, group that activity over time. So in this case, column one is one week after the first week. And this way we can see over time the percentage of users that are still doing the activity that we care about. Now, this table in of itself is very helpful. We can kind of see here right off the bat that there's a big drop in week one, um, further drop in week two, etc. And after five weeks, we've left with, you know, between 20 and 50 uh, users, 50% uh, of the users, but you know we can see that this week is a bit of an outlier compared to the others. So how do we go from this to this? And why would we want to do that? So let me first show you how we would do this. Now, there's a few little nuances about retention curves, which, which we need to get into. But first of all, let's go ahead and build the retention curve. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate the sheet and just on moving things around. So we know we don't want the first week. Uh, we can just drag that away and we can come. Um, yeah, now we need to move the measures up here and then we've got a line uh, bar graph and let's just go ahead and change it to a line. Okay. For now, we're just going to get rid of the colors and let's go ahead and put the mark labels on. Okay, so there we go. We've got our line graph. Let's just do some cleanup. We want this to be all in percentages. Percentage. Okay, looking good. Let's maybe change the color of the labels for now to black. Okay, so now we've got our line graph, but here's the issue. This line graph is representing all of the data from this table. Notice we didn't play with the filters or do anything like that. Now, that's not really a smart way to do it. I'm just going to rename it retention curve. Because if we look at this table, I want you to notice something. If we focus on, say, column two, we can see here that this week all the way to this week have data points for column two. But this week and this week don't because they're too early in the process, right? Um, you know, this is the current week. And obviously we don't have data yet in the second week from this point. And likewise, in this week, it's still only two weeks back. We don't have a data point for week three. That's why you have the shape where it goes up uh, diagonally upwards and you've got this like um, triangle of blank data because there just hasn't been enough time for these earlier weeks to have enough data. Um, so 
with this retention curve, since we got rid of the rows, it's including everything. So for example, in, on data point for week four, it's also including these weeks for the previous data points. So we need to find a way where instead of showing the entire table all the time, we're only showing a block of periods which include data points for all the data points, uh, include enough, you know, include the weeks where there's enough data points to show us the relevant lines. So this block over here shows us is basically has all the data we, we can use to show us accurately up to the fourth week, which would be column three. So the way I like to do this is using the following method, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create this uh, dashboard quickly. So just give me a minute. I just want to build it. Retention curve dashboard. I'm sorry if it's a bit small on your on the screen. Let's just do this. Oops. Edit height 50. Okay, maybe I'll make this a bit wider. Okay. Now let's go ahead and throw our table in here. Right, let's get rid of that. And now what I'm gonna do is put a bit of a white space. And now I'm going to drag the retention curve over here. Okay, I'm going to hide the title. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an action filter to essentially hide this table. So to do that, I'm going to click inside the retention curve uh, table, go up here to dashboard, actions, and action filter. And let's give it a name, retention curve filter okay on select within the table we want to affect the curve we want to exclude all values when we unselect okay 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 click click give it a sec click and now it's gone okay so now basically what we're going to do is let's just say we want to look at the four week or the five week retention curve for this table so now what i can do is just drag make a box excuse me now we get our retention curve and this is accurate the thing is it's only taking these weeks that's fine because we get to decide and this way we have all the hundred percents we have all the ones right so this 61 is essentially the average across all these. Then we go we, uh, into week three, which is data point two. We've got all these, right? So it's equal. This line is now an equal representation of these five full weeks. Now, another thing we can do, which I like, is let's just put a horizontal here for a second. Let's go ahead and... Um, duplicate this and now let's just get rid of this and this and this and this and we're just going to put the number that's right here total users apply and let's go ahead and drag this now over here um some white space maybe edit width let's make this 250 oops and I'll get rid of this okay so this needs to be a lot wider um 650 maybe all right let's go even further forget how wide this this view is you know 100 um Edit with 150. Okay, it's not working out. Why is this so small? Okay, so number of users. 
just drag it out. But that's center it. Well, not center it. That's put it over there, and that should help fix it up. Okay, cool. Now we just lastly we just got to update our action filter to represent um, this. I think it's doing it right now, but let's double check what's going on. Okay. Okay, by default it adds the new view. So now what we can do is when we build the block, it's gonna build our line. It's actually gonna show us the total number of users that are in the curve. That's kind of helpful because if the number of users is very low, then we might not have any statistical significance. Our last little hack we can do here is You'd obviously you'd probably want to make this dynamic, but we can go ahead and um, first event we can drag that onto color. Um, let's make this week since we're doing everything in week. And now what we have is we have the split between the the different weeks. So actually. Let's go here and make this discrete. Yep. And now we add the filter, the legend, I mean. Let's put this underneath. Come on. Okay, get rid of the title. Something like that. Yeah, so now what's really nice is we can examine each of the weeks and to see if over time we were actually raising the retention curve as it stated here we kind of ideally want this flattening or the smiling where it's actually hitting upwards um, and this way we can do it it's nice to actually use a parameter and make it dynamic so right now everything's in weeks but you could use a parameter to make to change the grouping here by you know, by quarter, by, by month, by quarter, depending on how much data you have to work with. So that's it. Um, if we wanted to say, for example, look at just the first two weeks, then we would do something like that. But now obviously we've got a very, you know, short line here. Uh, obviously we see the blue line, which is May is an outlier. So you know, we would want to investigate that further, see how high the blue line is compared to the, the other lines. And over time, it's actually decreased, which is not a good sign. So that's it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions on this topic, feel free to write them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.